The word of the day today is unnecessary. Every time I say the word unnecessary, a crunk core vocalist gets thrown in jail. It has been reported that Warped Tour is coming back in 2025 for a series of dates, and let me tell you, I'm not too thrilled about this. We should leave this fest dead and buried to let it rot forever, but nah. Instead, Kevin Lyman and Live Nation are gonna dig up this corpse and parade around like it's a weekend at Bernie's spinoff. We're gonna be diving headfirst into this drama, but before we do, welcome. My name is Dan Frampton. I like to make old-fashioned YouTube videos, and if you comment on them within the first three hours of them going onto the internet, I will comment back. So get awkward, get saucy, let's get warped. Ah, 1995, basically 30 years ago, what a time to be alive. Warp Tour is running its first bill. It's basically just a bunch of punk rock bands and ska bands in a parking lot somewhere with a bunch of pro skateboarders skating around hitting ramps and stuff. AKA, probably the coolest thing in the entire world, okay? 1995 to 2003 Warp Tour might be some of the coolest stuff to ever exist. This festival means so much to so many people, but if you're not familiar with Warp Tour, I'll explain it to you really, really quickly, okay? It's basically a touring carnival for punk rock artists. You know those summer festivals that happen every summer? Pictured one of those, but touring. And it's just full of punk, pop punk, and ska bands, okay? In the early days, it would change dramatically going forward. If you were an alternative kid, if you liked to skateboard, if you were into punk rock, if you were into anything that wasn't quite mainstream, then the Warp Tour definitely meant something to you. And you could go to it at an affordable rate and see everybody else that is into the exact same thing that you are. And it didn't feel corporate even though it was sponsored by Vans. It felt like a community. It felt very special to everybody from the very, very top to the very bottom. Huge bands like Blink-182 would get their start on the Warp Tour. So the 90s was focused mostly on punk and ska. The 2000s got a lot more pop punk and by the time the 2010s rolled around, we were doing a whole lot of metalcore, post-hardcore type stuff. We were so far removed from the actual message, the actual vibe of the original Warp Tour. And by the time 2018 came around, it was axed, taken around back, introduced to the firing squad, and buried forever. Well, at least that's what we thought. But I hear you asking, if the Warp Tour meant so much to everybody, why did they have to chop it? Why did they have to bury it? And uh, basically, people stopped going because of allegations. Maybe that should have been the word of the day. Because allegations certainly played a huge role in why Warp Tour no longer exists. I'm not going to get into every single allegation. There are good videos out there that do it. But by the time the mid-2010s rolled around, you weren't really seen as a cool band if you were playing Warp Tour. Bands like Modern Baseball, Touche Amore, Balancing Composure, etc. did not want to be involved with the Warp Tour because of the connotations that came along with it. Just allegations. So many allegations. And in 2018, festival founder Kevin Lyman had to say that he is closing operations due to a lack of community. That's a load of bullshit. Kevin and you know it. There was an incident with Front Porch Step, another bunch of incidents I do not want to get into in this video, but because of all the things that Front Porch Step were involved in, they were axed from the tour, and then Kevin Lyman instituted a second chance policy which brought them back. Now there are reasons why you wouldn't want Front Porch Step around a bunch of children, okay? But Kevin Lyman was like, every band deserves a second chance even the ones that are a danger to children. And for that, I'm sorry. I will not forgive that. I cannot forgive that. There is no coming back from that. I'm sorry, Kevin Lyman. Not to mention, blood on the dance floor. Whole lot of creepy stuff happened on the Warp Tour because of blood on the dance floor. Dozens of more bands with dozens of more allegations. Just a disgusting slop fest out there. And the creepiest weirdo on top of the pile of creepy weirdos, we gotta talk about Franz from Attila. Now Franz was leading the charge to get Warp Tour to come back. This guy is the most dangerous guy to the demographic of people that would typically go to a Warp Tour kind of thing. But now that it's the year 2024, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Warp Tour would have the same kind of audience as the When We Were Young Fest, and that's just like a bunch of 30 year olds. Because we got these two creepy guys leading the charge, 
Franz from Attila and Kevin Lyman, both extreme dangers to humanity, fronting the charge for the Warp Tour comeback. Of course our buddy Rockfeed is gonna get the scoop. He's the guy that loves rubbing elbows with that element. You know if Alex Terrible, Ronnie Radke, or MGK have a scoop? This is the guy they're going to. But earlier this week, Rockfeed, all credit to them, got the scoop to this story that Warp Tour is coming back. Kevin Lyman, Franz from Attila, front porch step, let's go everybody. And I'm sitting there going like, really? What, did we did we forget what happened? Did that, what's going on over here? How is this happening? It's like, oh yeah, they're getting in bed with Live Nation, another evil as hell company. So I'm like, oh, this isn't really the Warp Tour. This doesn't even have the soul of the Warp Tour. Tickets are gonna cost $500 to go to one of these things. And it's gonna be run by like the evil scumbags of the world. But anyway, let's read the Rock Feed tweet that announces this huge news. One of Rock Music's most iconic brands will be making an unnecessary comeback in 2025. Rockfeed has unnecessarily learned. According to multiple sources familiar with the matter, Warp Tour will unnecessarily return with a series of unnecessary festivals next year. Warp Tour helped launch the careers of numerous noteworthy artists, including Blink 182, Sum 41, Paramore, Katy Perry, and more. Warp Tour unnecessarily returns in 2025. The Rock Festival will be overseen by Live Nation, although beloved festival founder Kevin Lyman is said to be heavenly involved. Oh, is he heavily involved, you say? That's good to know. That's reassuring. Oh, I'm glad. That's the peace of mind I needed going forward. Thank you very much. A request to comment from Live Nation has not been returned. Oh, really? That's funny. But to this news coming out, most people are pretty stoked about it. Most people are like, I got so emotional when I heard. And really, that's because there is so much nostalgia associated with the Warp Tour. The 30 year anniversary, all this kind of stuff is going to be tugging at so many heartstrings of so many generations. People that were going to shows in the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, they're all going to be so like emotionally invested into this story right off the bat. But I don't think that this thing should be happening to begin with. I thought its reputation was dead and buried. I didn't think anybody wanted to slap a Warp Tour branding on top of anything ever again because of the connotations associated with it, you know? I didn't think that that was gonna be like a cool thing for people to be like, I'm associated with. But I guess enough time has passed. Who gives a shit, right? It's just the warp Tour. It's just a thing that's happening. Just a money grab thing. You know how it goes. So yeah. I certainly do. I have more than a handful of memories associated with the Warp Tour. I've seen some of my favorite bands ever at the Warp Tour, but I was also there for the Metamorphosis and saw it turn into what it turned into. Like I saw it before my very eyes. And then the people coming up in the scene behind me, they were so stoked to get chances to play Warp Tour. Meanwhile, I was doing everything I could to avoid the Warp Tour. It had its time, it's had its place, it's over. And I'm totally shocked that this is being positively promoted and received right now. What I'm saying here might be the hot take and I have no idea why. Kevin Lyman with the trust of so many people. He endangered so many people. And now everybody's just like, yeah, let's do it again. Sounds good, pal. No, 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 he, he doesn't get a second chance. Not with me anyway. That kind of stuff is unforgivable. If you need some horror stories and don't want to go to sleep tonight, Blood on the Dance Floor, Attila, and Front Porch Steph. Happy Googling. And those are just the tip of the iceberg. Just like you're on the tip of the iceberg of the Frampton universe. I have two other obscure channels. One where I do video game stuff and one where I upload slop content. I did slop videos all week, uploaded one earlier today. You might enjoy it. I'll I'll leave a link at the end. So if you enjoyed this video, it is imperative that you watch another one of my videos on any one of my three channels. Okay, bye for now. Have a good one.